welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss real, metaphysical, and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible results in your life. This week we're going to be discussing Lucifer, but if this is your first time visiting our channel and you like our content, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you receive notifications anytime we release a new video or do a live stream. Alright, let's get to it. Okay, so this week's video is one that we have gotten a lot of requests for. So I have been working a lot specifically with Lucifer in order to get a good amount of information to give you and make sure that the video I produce is one that he himself will like as I try to do with all the um, videos of entities that I work with or do videos on. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by talking a little bit about the gnosis that I've had with Lucifer. And then I'll cover some of the information, um, correspondence style stuff that is commonly associated with Lucifer, stuff that he's communicated to me, as well as some things that I've received from other people who have worked with him actually um, longer than I have. He's one I work with, but uh, I work with him off and on. Um, so do be aware of that. Now, that said, Lucifer, the morning star, the light bringer, um, a lot of people want to paint him as the devil or Satan and this evil entity always out to corrupt mankind. Um, in fact, growing up in the church, that's exactly how I knew him. And I think that's perhaps one of the reasons I took forever to even reach out to him. Um, but I'm glad I did because it showed me my own bias there. And when I met him, um, I was very wary. But I did treat him with respect, just like I do any entity going in. And what I found out about Lucifer um, in my personal gnosis about him, the title Light Bringer has a lot more meaning than just light. Um, I have found Lucifer to be an excellent, excellent teacher in things, especially dealing with self-mastery, self-empowerment. Um, he, he's also really good at helping you uncover things that are hidden, cloaked, those kinds of things. He can really bring and shine that light onto those aspects in your life and help you to um, uncover things that are hidden from you. Now, one of the things that I have actually found um, in my workings, and many others have actually confirmed this as well, is he is a fascinatingly good entity to work with when it comes to enlightenment. And again, I do think this is really where that light bringer title of his comes from. So if you are seeking some form of enlightenment, Lucifer is a great entity to work with. And you do see this in many practices, um, like the Temple of the Ascending Flames, um, Luciferianism. You do see them using him in um, this style. Now, he does, in my experience, um, he does seem to really push more towards self-ascent and self-mastery and self-empowerment. He really wants to push you to do for yourself as opposed to sit around worshiping other entities and having other entities do things for you. He has no problem helping you. Don't get me wrong there. It's not like you can't ask him to help you. But his preference is to push you into getting these things done on your own and truly find your own power so that you don't have to turn to these entities um, and honestly I think that's one of my favorite things about him he really is pushing you for that self mastery um, and this is a lot of the reason why people look to him for self deification and or ascent because he is very much about teaching you to embody your own true power and rise above just your earthly limitations now that said this is actually probably the area me and Lucifer spend the most time working in and because of that that is really where the largest part of my gnosis is now of course I get asked a lot what sigil do I use when I work with Lucifer um, he has given me a private sigil between him and I to use but I did start with one that is probably the most common if you google sig sigil of Lucifer it's probably the one that's going to pop up but I'll go ahead and include it here. 
So that's the sigil I actually started working with Lucifer with. And in a pinch, I do still use that on occasion um, if I need to. Whether I'm working with another person, a student, um, or I just don't have my notes with me and I need to grab one off the internet, I'll use that one. Now, one question I do get a lot, are Lucifer and Azazel the same? No. Um, in all my experience working with them, I do not find them to be the same entity at all. They do share certain similarities, like you do have that whole self-mastery, self-empowerment ideal. But I actually find Lucifer to be a far easier entity to work with than Azazel. Azazel can be very direct and very harsh, whereas Lucifer tends to be a bit easier going, a bit more laid back. I mean, he's still going to push you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he won't push you. He will push you. It's just he doesn't tend to push as hard as Azazel. But these two, in my experience, are very, very different entities and are not the same. Now, there are people who think they are the same, and in their experience, they do work with them that way. And I understand that. Different practitioners, mileage will vary, and I get that. But in my gnosis, my, what I've found over the years, I do not believe they, them to be the same entity at all. Now, the next question I often get, is Lucifer and Samuel the same? This one, I am more inclined to believe that they are indeed the same entity. Um, both in the lore and in my experience, I do find Lucifer and Samuel to actually possibly be the same entity. I need to work more with Samuel to actually nail this down for certainty. But at least at this time in my practice, I do believe there's a really good chance that those two entities are the same. Okay, so that brings us to some simple correspondences that you can use when working with Lucifer. I know this is something I don't include in a lot of videos, but when it comes to Lucifer, so many people always include this information anytime I'm talking with them. I thought it would be actually a good idea to include it, especially when we do know this correspondence exists. So cardinal direction wise, most people will associate Lucifer with the East and that's because of the air, the knowledge um, that comes from the East. And I get that. It is true he's also associated with the element of fire. So both fire and air, so East and South could work. The majority of the time, I'd say probably 80% to 90% of the time, you will see him associated with the East. Now, in my experience working with Lucifer and in magicians I've spoken with, they've confirmed this as well. Um, incense types that Lucifer enjoys working with is dragon's blood, frankincense, and cinnamon. Um, actually, during this working when him and I was talking and getting this video together, we actually made a pot of coffee and sat down to go over the notes and he requested that I actually put a pinch of cinnamon in the coffee as it brewed. Really good, by the way. Great suggestion on his part. Um, so these are really good incenses that you can use. Me, most of the time, I use Dragon's Blood. Most of you know that. It's the incense that I just keep on hand around here. Now, candle colors and associations that people like to use with Lucifer are white, black, red, and orange. Um, in my experience, this is accurate, honestly. Um, the one, the three I've used any time I've worked with him is white, black, and red. I usually keep those three candles in this house um, in my working area all the time, and he seems to like any combination of them. So if you're trying to match up your candle colors to your ritual, you don't have to. Those are the ones I would recommend. The orange... I have not actually used it. I have not used it, but I've got at least 10 practitioners that I know who work with Lucifer far more regularly than I do, and all of them included orange. So I trust their viewpoint and opinion on that, and I'm going to go ahead and include that one here. Now, favorite offerings. Now, when it comes to me, I generally gear my offerings more toward energetic offerings or a beverage of some kind. So I did actually have to reach out and get some input on this as well. So red wine, that's one that I do offer a lot as an offering um, or even a homebrew wine or beer that I've made. 
I found that Lucifer does like those, though he does kind of lean more to the wine category than beer. So for those beer drinkers out there, I apologize. He does tend to favor wine over beer. Um, chocolate. Uh, he seems to have a sweet tooth. I don't know why. I've actually had him request chocolate several times, and this is actually one that my colleagues have actually told me about as well. So there definitely seems to be some confirming gnosis there. Um, poems. He loves actual poems and stuff that are written and dedicated to him. This ain't one I've done. This is one that um, has been shared with me. Um, tobacco, rum, and this is a big one that I do think um, almost any entity likes is your time. You actually set the time aside to actually work with them and spend with them. Um, so all these offerings are really great things that you can actually use for Lucifer. Now, the tobacco, that, that was an interesting one because I do use tobacco with a lot of entities. It's not one I've ever had Lucifer ask for. Um, but I do think it would work. I mean, it is highly associated with um, spirit work and wisdom, so I could see why tobacco would work here. Um, and rum, that's not one I've tried. Again, those both come from Gnosis that other people have given me. Um, and I haven't personally had a chance to test those out yet. But when I asked um, Lucifer about the list, he, he agreed with it and said, yeah, that worked totally. Let's go with that. So if, if the man himself says it's good, we're good. So we're, yeah, feel free to use those. Now, herbs or herbs, as some people say, um, that would associate with Lucifer. Um, sandalwood, cinnamon, frankincense, lavender, and myrrh um, is the list that a friend of mine gave me. I don't really work a lot with herbs. I apologize. So this is one area where I really did have to reach out and talk to some colleagues and then confirm it with Lucifer. Um, all of these will work. He confirmed and said, yes, that's good to go. So definitely... Honestly, of these, I think frankincense is actually one of my favorites. So that's the one I'd probably utilize if I was going to. Now, some actual crystals and stones. I've been getting a lot of questions if I could talk about more about those. So I did sit down with Lucifer in order to find out if any crystals or stones would be good for rituals when working with him. And we found out that clear quartz, carnelian, amethyst, Garnet and Black Onyx are all very good ones to work with them. Um, of these, I think my favorite is probably the Black Onyx and the Amethyst. Um, I have used both in working with him at different times, um, largely for scrying or enhancing a psychic connection. I didn't necessarily realize that he himself actually liked them, so that was kind of fascinating that he actually um, informed me of that later on, which was kind of cool. Now, the next question I often get when being asked about Lucifer is how does he appear? Um, honestly, his appearance has shown differently throughout the years as I've worked with him. Originally, he showed up as a well-dressed gentleman with shoulder-length blonde hair, um, which really threw me off. I was not expecting that at all. And then at times, he would show up as a gentleman usually with a pair of slacks often sometimes with sometimes without a shirt um, large dark wings and dark hair um, he has shown up a time or two wearing a robe with sometimes with a hood sometimes without a robe and I'm wanting to say every time I've seen him in the robe he's also had wings sometimes they were white sometimes they were dark but the robe always tends to gravitate toward a black or red color um, Though I do see him often dressing in whites as well. So don't be surprised by that. He can have a very bright personality about him. Um, and that is largely due to that enlightenment aspect that you will see. He's not that dark devil figure that he's been made in pop culture to be. Um, and he does have a good sense of humor. I won't lie. Um, uh, many times during this working with him recently he started showing up as the character from the tv series that you can find on netflix called lucifer 
um, accent and all. So honestly, when he first done that, that took me a little to get past because I wanted to laugh. It, I found it humorous. And it is good to know that you're working with somebody who does have that sense of humor, who doesn't take themselves over seriously, but at the same time, they're going to be a great teacher. They're going to push you forward to better yourself and be the best practitioner you can be and drive you to reach your goals. Now, one piece of gnosis that I get a lot of flack on, but I also catch a lot of magicians agreeing with me on. Um, so you'll have to work with Lucifer and meditate on this one yourself. Many people think Lucifer is Satan. Um, I don't find that to be true. In fact, actually, this is one of the things where the title of Satan gets dropped onto so many entities um, in history that I don't think Satan is so much an entity as a title, a mantle, or something like that. It's an energetic title. And it's actually not a title that personally I use with any of these entities because largely the title was used as a, from the church's perspective to demonize and tear down old gods by the Christian church and supplant them with the Christian God. Now, many of you know I'm not a religious person, so I don't put any entity above another entity, but I do try to respect entities anytime I work with them. So I'm really not a big fan of using the title Satan um, for any entity because it was a title to demote and demean many of these entities in my personal gnosis that I have found. So I do not use that title for them or Lucifer. In fact, I have found that over the years their power has not diminished at all. Um, and I don't want to disrespect them by view applying that title to them. And I've never found an entity that is Satan in its true form of Satan. Um, like I said, it is a title that was placed on many, many old gods, deities, um, spirits and entities to demonize them and make, lay them low before the Christian concept. And I'm not for that. I'm not for that at all. We don't put anyone down, much less entities. And that's one reason I'm not a religious fella, because you see this not just in Christianity. Almost every religion tries to prop itself up as the one true way. I ain't with that. So, no, I personally don't view Lucifer as Satan. Um, and it's largely because of the gnosis that comes with that. It's less of an entity and more of a title. And that's the reason I don't. Now, there are practitioners out there who do view Satan as an entity, and that has been their experience. And many of them do view Satan and Lucifer as one and the same. To those with that gnosis, I understand that. I really do. It's just my experiences, the gnosis I've gotten, and what I've learned over time, and possibly due to my background in the church, it's not something that I can place and a title that I'll give Lucifer because honestly I have far too much respect for him and what I know about the title at least from my personal experience that coming from me for me to call him that would be disrespectful okay I know this has been a quick just like download of information and everything um, but I do hope you have enjoyed this in video and more importantly I hope it inspires you to reach out and get to know Lucifer. Say hi to him and learn more about him directly. Um, take the time to talk to him. He is a wonderful entity to work with. Um, I've always found him so easy to approach. He is a very approachable entity. Um, I always get the question, starter entity, not a starter entity. Um, as far as ease to approach and ease to work with, I honestly would say Lucifer is very easy to work with, very easy to approach and would definitely make a great starter entity for a practitioner. That said, he's, for all those who keep asking me about packs with the devil, first off, we've debunked the concept of how packs work as wish granters in those videos that we did. And Lucifer, ironically, is not a big 
um, fan of packs. He really does not like them because, again, he wants you to do for yourself. So if you approach him in a manner of putting him in a position of godhood like you would the Christian God, or you approach him in a mindset, I'm powerless, do this for me, that's the times where he can be a bit rougher to work with because he's not just going to hand you something. He will reach down, grab you by the neck, and jerk you up onto your feet and help you to actually get it done for yourself. So he will help you. He will help you get there, but he won't do it for you. He's going to make sure you're the one doing the work, and he's going to aid you in doing it. So be aware of that as you work with him. But again, absolute wonderful entity to work with. And he is a lot easier when it comes to lifting you up than some of the other entities we've talked about on this channel. Anyways, that's what we got for you today. Be sure to join us um, Friday and Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do a live stream there where we answer questions. Um, I talk a little bit about the research I got going on in my life at the current time. And it's always a good time. Great way to start the weekend and end the weekend. And until next time, I'm Drake, and this has been Working Dragon Mystic. Take it easy.